Okay, so probability questions are going to be on your TSI test. There's going to be no going around that. So what I wanted to do today is I want us to go over a probability question together. We're going to do a full breakdown of the question, hopefully be able to answer any questions that you may have. And if you wait until the end of this video, I'm going to give you a link to a free uh, TSI practice math test that I've created. It has several different types of questions that may be found on your TSI math test. And the first 50 students that go ahead and submit their answers to that test, you can also submit your questions and I'll be able to reply to your questions if you have any. So again, it's only going to be for the first 50 students who submit their answers to the test. And then again, just if you're not familiar with me, my name is Miss Amber. I'm a professional tutor and I'm just trying to help students pass their college entrance exams. So let's get started with this problem. It says there are 200 students in a school. So I'm going to go ahead and underline that information because that's probably going to be the total. It says those students are taking either art, music, or both. So anytime I see or I'm reading a probability question and it's talking about different options, including the option for both, in my brain, the best way for me to do this problem, and I hope that this is going to encourage you guys as well, is I just like to draw a picture. And by a picture, I just mean a Venn diagram. And these students, they're gonna be taking art. So I'm gonna write art on this side. The middle always represents both. How many students are gonna be in both art and music? And on the right, I'm just gonna write music. So it says, if 100 students are a music class, so 100 students are taking music, 20 are in both. I'm just writing down this information just so I can see it outside of the question. What is the probability of randomly choosing an art only student in the school? Okay, so it says 20 are in both. I'm gonna go ahead and write 20 in the center because 20 students are in both art and music. Now it says there are 100 students who are taking music. Now, if you notice, it doesn't say that there's 100 students taking music only, but there's 100 students that are taking music. So this can include the 20 students that are taking both. So if there's 20 students already in the class that are taking both, how many students are in music only? So you would do 100 minus 20, and that would equal 80 students that are in music only. So we have 80 students that are only taking music. We have 20 students that are taking both. And then it says, what is the probability of randomly choosing an art only student? The only way that we can find a probability, which is we're gonna create a fraction where the total is on the bottom and whatever we're looking for is on top. So art only should be on the top. We don't have a number in the art only bubble. So we have to figure out, okay, what number of students are taking art only? So if there are 80 students taking music only, and there's 20 students taking both, and there's a total of 200 students, what we have to do is we have to take 20 plus 80, which is equal to 100. And now we need to take the total 200 students minus 100 students, and we get 100 students left over. And that's the number of students that are taking art only. So if we want to go ahead and fill out this fraction in order to get the probability, the amount of students that are taking art only would be 100. And the amount of students that are total or in all is 200. So we now have a fraction to represent the probability of how many students are only taking art. But if you look at the answers, None of the answers are 100 over 200. And so it gives us an idea that we're either gonna have to convert it into a percentage or we're gonna have to reduce it into a smaller fraction. So we're gonna take 100 over 200 and I'm gonna show you both ways. I'm gonna show you how we can turn that into a decimal that we can turn into a percentage. And then I'm also gonna show you guys how we could just reduce the fraction to see what our answer is going to be. So let's first talk about changing this into a decimal or a percentage. 
The reason why I want to teach you guys that is that probability either is going to give you an answer in a fraction form, a decimal form, or a percentage form. You can show probability in any three of those ways. And so right here, we, are, we have a fraction. So how can we make that fraction into that decimal form? And then how we, can we put that into a percentage form to see if this is the answer somewhere in our answer choices? Well, if we want to change a fraction to a decimal, the easiest way to do it is to take the numerator, 100, and divide it by the denominator, which is 200. And when you do 100 divided by 200, you get 0.5. So 100 over 200 as a decimal is 0.5. Okay? Then we're going to say, okay, well, how do we change a decimal into a percentage? And it's very simple. You just, wherever your decimal point is, and I'm going to start a new page for you guys, wherever you have the decimal point, you just move the decimal point over two spaces to the right and put a percentage sign. So in this case, I'm going to move the decimal point over once, and I'm going to move it over again. I'm going to fill this blank in with a zero, and I'm going to draw a percent sign. So 0.5 is equal to 50%. Okay, I'm going to show you guys that one more time, but we don't want to lose focus from the problem, but I just, I know I'm going to have questions about that, so I might as well answer it now. So if I have 0.38 and I want to write that as a percentage, I'm just going to move the decimal point over twice, and I'm going to add a percentage sign. So 0.38 is equal to 38%. Okay, so now that we know that 100 over 200, which was our answer, is written as a decimal 0.5 or as 50%, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check, is any one of these answers in our answer choices? So this percentage is 80%, so nope, that's not the answer. And of course, this is just me being silly, but that's not the answer either. We're gonna start liking these questions, even if they're difficult. And so now we know that it's not going to be in a fraction. It's not going to be in that whole fraction that it was. It's not going to be in a decimal form, and it's not going to be a percentage. So that just means we probably are going to end up having to reduce our fraction. So reduce our fraction. I know that it's been a while since we've been in school, but how do we reduce a fraction? We reduce a fraction by dividing the top and the bottom number, the, the numerator and the denominator, by the largest number that can go into both, or the greatest common factor. So the greatest number that can go into 100 and 200 is 100. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 100. 100 divided by 100 is 1. 200 divided by 100 is 2. My fraction reduced is 1 half. And so that will give me C as my answer. So yes, this may have been a little bit complicated, but we're able to do it. And so what I recommend is if you do have a probability question and it's similar to this one because you may see a problem that's very similar, I don't want you guys to just be like, okay, well, I went on YouTube and I did a probability with Miss Amber. I don't really remember what we did. It got a little complicated. I was a little confused and then get the wrong answer. No. So just hold on just one more moment and just let's just review just a little bit. So when we saw that it was art, music, or both, when we saw the word both, we knew that the best way to solve this question is to make a picture, draw a Venn diagram. When you draw a Venn diagram, it's very easily to label a Venn diagram with the different classes and to see, okay, the 20 students that are in both, that means if there's 100 total students that take music, and they're divided into two sections of the Venn diagram and 20 are here, that means 80 are over here. So 100 total students are in a math class, 20 of them are in math and art, 80 of them are in music only. Okay, but now it's like, okay, we wanna find how many are in art only. So we took that total 200, subtracted by the 100 students that are in music or both, and we have 100 students that are in art only. When we found out, okay, how many students are in art only, we put it into a fraction over the total, and then we were either told to reduce the fraction, or we had to turn the fraction into a decimal, 
or we had to turn the decimal into percentage. And so now you guys know how to do each one of those things. So I hope I made this as clear as possible. Sorry if I was calling music class, math class for a second. I felt that, but I was like, oh my gosh, I can't start over at this point. We're too far deep, like we're too in this. But you guys did an excellent job. So this question is a question that I actually developed myself based on a que some questions that a student that I've been tutoring for the TSI math test sent over to me. And these were the type of t questions that were very difficult for her. So what I did was I created a Google form and it's a TSI practice test. And I'm going to put the link in the description right below. And I want you guys to click on the Google form, go to the Google form. It's completely free to submit your answers. As long as you're subscribed to my channel, you can go ahead and put your answers in. Some of the questions are going to be simple. Some questions are going to be a little bit more challenging. That was the goal because I want you guys to see the wide variety of questions that you guys may see on the TSI math test. And so I want you guys to go in, do your best answering the questions that I've developed. And at the very end, you can ask me any question that you have for me, any question about any of the videos that you're watching, any questions about the TSI math test. The first 50 students who go ahead and fill out this form and answer the questions, I will only be able to get back to the first 50. So if you go ahead and you're quick about it, then I can go ahead and answer any questions that you have. Again, my name is Miss Amber, and my goal is for each person that watches my videos that is about to take a TSI math test or an acupuncture test or even a TEAS test in the future, I want you guys to feel prepared and I want you to be confident and I really want you guys to pass. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing all your answers.